The eight-year-old son wanted to become a eunuch, and his father agreed. He turned around and brought the tools to stop the bleeding and castrated his son himself. At the end of the Qing dynasty, the eunuch Shaun went home to visit his family. His procession was vast and lively all the way. He was very rich and came back with honor. The young Fu looked at him with envy. The eunuch not only lived in a big house, but also had beautiful women as his companion. While Fu can only be with his friends at the door to pick up some leftovers to eat. For Fu, who could not afford to eat all the time, this was not easy to come by. So it begged his father to let him become a eunuch. His father borrowed many tools and food ingredients from neighbors to stop the bleeding. He cut it cleanly, and Fu and his baby were separated forever. There was no medical treatment at that time, and Fu was laid up for several months to regain his energy after three days of high fever. Just then, the news came from the town that the emperor had abdicated. Fu became a eunuch, but there was no more emperor. The neighbors all came to see the joke, laughing at Fu for becoming the last eunuch in China. The father had to send his son to the town's opera, Troupe de Lundard. Before that, he deep fried and air dried Fu's baby and kept it sealed. His mother also told him to protect the baby, or he would not be reborn as a human being in his next life. With his talent, Fu soon became a popular actor in the troupe. He sang and danced beautifully. The warlord marshal, who came to see the play, fell in love with Fu immediately after seeing him. Fu sent home all the money he had earned over the years. His old cloth shoes were so worn out that he didn't want to change them even though they had holes in them. Although he was doing very well as a flower girl, Fu still had one thing in mind, and that was to become a eunuch in the palace. He begged his master to help him to bring him into the palace. Master always treated Fu as a beloved disciple, even a son. Naturally, he did not want him to serve the emperor in the palace. Master immediately reprimanded him. After that, he persuaded Fu to focus on the opera. At night, his brothers got up in arms and dragged Fu to a brothel. Here he met T, a woman by chance. T was also very poor. Her family wanted a son, but after she had a brother, her mother couldn't feed her and sold her to the brothel. She was worth only five dollars, cheaper than a pig. Fu wanted to redeem her in his heart, so he ran back to the theater to borrow money from the master. He happened to meet the marshal's henchman, who came to invite Fu to his house as a guest. In the middle of the night, Fu is sent back in his military uniform. The marshal likes Fu very much and will marry him tomorrow in a palanquin. Of course the master did not agree. He went to the brothel and bought tea back and asked Fu to take tea back to the countryside to live. Before leaving, he handed Fu's baby to him. But the curious tea took it. She opened it and suddenly her face changed. She thought Fu was just injured, but she didn't expect he was a eunuch. She cursed him as a monster and rushed away. Fu knelt on the ground. His head was buried deep in the ground and he couldn't even lift his head up. He understood that his status would be looked down upon everywhere he went. He had no choice but to go to the palace. His master instructed him to be a eunuch with backbone and he spent all the money to let Fu see the emperor. Fu thus entered the palace. This man worked as a eunuch in the palace. The first thing he did in the palace was to go to a house to house his baby. And there are rules here. The higher the rank of the eunuch, the higher the place where the baby is placed. The largest eunuch's baby was enshrined at the top, while Fu could only hang it at the bottom. Fu secretly swore that he would hang it at the top. However, he had no power and no money, so he could only do what jobs. Once when he was delivering water outside the palace, Fu discovered that the eunuchs were secretly selling the palace's artifacts. They sold the artifacts and kept money for themselves. He immediately reported the situation to his superior eunuch Ding. Ding decided to find the grand superintendent and ask him to deal with the sellers of artifacts. But the Grand Master and the Imperial City Guard had already colluded secretly, and he also sold the artifacts privately. And Fu was slandered and taken away. He should have been beheaded, but that day in time for the Emperor's big day. He was beaten twelve times with a stick, and Ding could not do anything about it. He told Fu to find a chance to show himself in front of the Emperor and get rid of these parasites in the palace in one fell swoop. Soon his chance came. The Empress wanted to hear the opera. So Ding deliberately arranged for Fu to perform in the compound. Fu's beautiful singing voice and suck body are very popular with his superiors who are in charge of this matter. He immediately decided to put Fu on stage. Ding also wrote the speech of the performance, and it took Fu to recite them overnight. But then the palace caught fire, and the emperor was furious and dismissed all the eunuchs. All eunuchs who did not leave within an hour were to be beheaded. All the eunuchs poured into the room, containing their babies. They grabbed and grabbed not caring whether it was their own baby. Grabbed one and ran. In the chaos, Fu's baby were trampled to pieces. He also followed the crowd and left the palace. With nowhere else to go, 
he tried to return to the opera house to continue singing. However, the once lively theater was now empty. The warlords were searching for revolutionaries and the streets were filled with corpses. Fumetti once again, the woman who left him alone and disliked him is also having a hard time. On the night she left the theater, she saved a revolutionary. Let us soon fall in love with each other. But the road is very dangerous. T is pregnant and running around. But her husband is nowhere to be found. With no one to turn to in this chaotic world, they decided to live together. They lived happily for a few years. Fu truly treated T's son as his own child. The family lived a happy life. But with the appearance of a man, their peaceful life was shattered. This unit pulled down his pants in public and shouted loudly and recklessly. The crowd gathered around and the police search was disrupted. The police beat up Fu. But Fu didn't give up at all. He did not relent in attracting their hatred. It was only when the train whistle sounded and drove away that he left. Not long ago, the last emperor was forced to abdicate and exit the forbidden city completely to seek asylum at the Japanese consulate. Dean, an old eunuch who had waited for years, found Fu and asked him to follow him to serve the emperor. For years, T has long regarded Fu as the father of her child, as well as her own husband, the man who raised the family wanted to go back to be a eunuch again. Of course, T did not agree. She picked up her son and left. Fu rushed to stop her. Ding pulled out his clothes and hung them from the rafters, threatening him with death. Fu can't do anything about it, so he changes into his eunuch uniform and follows Ding to the Japanese consulate the next day. But they were beaten up by the Japanese. In the confusion, Ding's baby fell to the ground and was taken away by dogs. Just then the emperor appeared. That too shouted, but he only looked back. The eunuch, who had devoted his life to the palace, knelt in the direction the emperor had left. He just kept kneeling, and the old man died. Fu buried his own baby in front of Dean's grave, hoping that it could keep his full body and be reincarnated as a human being. Fu also decided to abandon his status as a eunuch once and for all. He went to his home to apologize to T. She sees how good Fu has been to her over the years. She let go of her feelings, and they planned to get married after a year and become a real family. Fu cut off his braid, a symbol of the Qin dynasty, which meant a break with the past. He happily went to the street to buy lanterns, wine and food to have a good festival. When he came back, he saw T sitting in the doorway in silence. An unexpected guest came to the house. The child's real father, the revolutionary, came to the house. The man thanked Fu for taking good care of the mother and son. He takes one look at the son and prepares to leave. But Fu stops him. He understood that the child needed a complete family and a healthy father. Not a broken man like himself. He felt he didn't deserve a wife at all. Taking advantage of the night, the man and T immediately tried to leave by train. But the station was plastered with wanted notices. The man kept a low profile along the way, but still attracted the attention of the guards. As they were about to be arrested, there was a commotion on the station platform. Fu held a flag and yelled loudly, diverting the guards' attention. He was beaten severely and then the train started the crowd to disperse. Fu was too sore to crawl up, but he was full of happiness. When he looked up, he found T standing across the street with his child in his arms. Fu threw the eunuch's hat that had bound him for half his life into the wind. He ran over and took T's hand, and the movie came to an end. Most people think eunuchs are representatives of cowardice, but Fu shows courage and commitment being most men. He can be called the last man of the Qing dynasty.